4. It's all about entering into the rest of God. Okay, let's find our spot. Sabihin mo nga po muna sa inyong mga katabi, I'm happy that you're here. And isang uh, tingin nga po sa kanan at sa kaliwa, at dyan lang kayo sa pwesto nyo, kung meron kayong nakikita na namimiss nyo po, isang kid, kindatan nyo nga po yung kapatid nyo, at lamamaya after ng fellowship natin, eating fellowship, ano, Alapitan nyo at uh, ano, uh, kumustahin. Pero for now, isang kindat. Uh, beautiful eyes. Ganyan <laughs> lang. Praise God. And uh, sabi ko nga po kanina, in Hebrews 4, chapter 4, if you have your Bible and you have your notes, in uh, Hebrews 4, chapter uh, it is about entering into His rest. And I would like to read about on the uh, verse of 7. It says, So God set another time for anything entering His rest, and that time is today. He set another time. He, he didn't set, He says, the day is tomorrow. He set another time for entering His rest. Who needs rest? Si Lord, nagbamasage pa yan. Nagbabalik na. He, he restores strength. God set another time for entering His rest and that time is today. That time is now. God announced this through David much later in the word already quoted. It says, Today, when you hear His voice, don't harden your heart. So our, the word for the for the reason why you're here is because the word of the Lord prepared for today is for us. It's not for our neighbors. It's for us. Amen. Kanya-kanya ang kin lang yan. Meron po ba tayong clicker? Amen. So our topic for today is unlocking the door of God's blessings in our finances. Gusto niyo po ba yun? Do you like it? Unlocking the door of God's blessing in our finances. And in our giving time, we heard Sister Karena says, tithing or giving is a key to open or to receive God's blessings. But that is only one principle in the heavens, in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven. And today, I will tackle, uh, we will talk about two topics of how to unlock the door of God's blessing in our finances that usually you never, you will not, never heard or hindi siya pinag-uusapan sa pulpit. And let's talk about one is, uh, let me open this, I, I know you're familiar and it's in Tagalog with this line, friends or friend, kaibigan, open-minded ka ba? <laughs> I know you're familiar with this line, open-minded ka ba? Are you... Yeah, are you open-minded? <laughs> Nais ko sanang ibahagi sa iyo ang isang magandang opportunity na makakapagbigay sa iyo ng extra income. Gusto niya hindi po ba? Extra income. Uh, kahit nasa bahay ka o nasa trabaho ka o kahit sa spare time mo lang ito gawin, madalas ka bang kasama ng barkada? Nang mga kapatiran, mag-hangout, chismis to the max, kwentuhan lang, chat, Facebook, perfect para sa iyo ito. Kailangan mo lang itong mapag-aralan, i-share sa lahat ng tao, uh, at makakatulong ka na kumikita ka pa. So saan line po ba ito? In which part or which line you are usually hearing this? Nar uh, scam. <laughs> Networking, scam. So, open-minded ka ba? Actually, that's the question. Are you open-minded? When you say open-minded, it means you are willing to consider a new idea. Open-minded ka ba? Are you willing to consider a new idea? But right now, yes, may narinig ako doon. Bumibenta na po ba? <laughs> okay, but now we are not uh, talking about a new idea. But it is a fundamental in the kingdom of God. It is... Um, important and it is a foundation in the kingdom of God uh, the topic that we are going to talk today dito you don't need to be open minded but we need to be to have an open spiritual mind Amen. 
open spiritual ears for us to hear what the Lord will say to us and submissive heart so that every time we hear, uh, the time we heard about His Word, nandun yung willingness to obey. Willingness. Tapos agad? O nag-uumpisa pala? And one uh, key, aside for tithing and or giving, still the box is open po until the end of the and a service as they says, not says, the Bible says, one key for God's blessing to be open is for tithing or giving. Kung alam nyo na yung sekreto, dapat hindi na tayo nag-withhold sa pagbibigay. And another topic, another key, ay, ang, ganda, ang galing ah, ang bilis. O, oh, dyan po ba to? <laughs> yes, says here, recognize finances as spiritual issue. Sabi po sa Matthew, bakit po? Kasabi po sa, sa Matthew, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We cannot just view money as material thing without any spiritual power or impact in our life. Hindi siya lang pera-pera lang yan. And alam niyo po, paano ko masasabi yon? How can I say that? If we have enough money to pay bills, we do not worry. If we have enough money to shop, to do shopping, we don't have any worry. And if we, if we have enough money to pay our credit cards, our loans, we do not worry. Tama po ba? But if we do not have money, we worry a lot. <laughs> and it, it brings us an emotion that is not of God. So that's why even money is... A material thing, we should not, as believer, as a as a follower of Christ, as a, the one who is Jesus is the King. We should not um, consider that money is just a material thing, but it is a spiritual issue or spiritual matter. Because there is a potential that these finances or money become became or become our master. And it is that it, I believe that is why this uh, in the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew 6, one of the topic of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount is about serving that we cannot serve God and riches at the same time. Now, who is this Mammon? Mammon is not just a material thing. Mammon means po in Hebrew means money. Wealth, possessions, that is with one trust or corrupting riches. That's, that is the mammon for Hebrew word na ka, ka equal to it. Now, who is mammon? Nakikita niyo po ba sometimes, no, in the... I just don't want to mention, maybe you're seeing these figures. Who are the mammon? According to Christian theology, some studies, mammon is a demon who embodies one of the fundamental sin, means greed, greediness or greed. It can corrupt the mind so people can focus their attention on building up worldly treasure instead of qualities that they can carry with them into the kingdom of heaven. So that's why we should not only consider mammon as money, but it is a person because God is a person. Mammon, we are referring, is, is somehow a person who can affect us. It is a sin. It is greediness. So the Lord says you cannot serve two master. Either you will hate one or you will lo be loyal to one or you will hate the, uh, love the other or you will despise the other. So that's why money should not only be considered as material thing. So lahat ng pagkakataon, sa testimony of Sister 
uh, solves money in booking ticket has a great impact. And if you don't have it, you, you will worry, where will I get this 59,000, this 60,000? <coughs> When we find, sabi nga po dito, money has a potential to be our master. In fact, it will compete in our commitment with God. When we find our hearts being drawn by money, when we find our decisions is based on money, when we find our time, more time and more time is engaged to per, in pursuit of money, paghahanap ng pera, like overtime ng overtime because I need some money. And you have a commitment to the Lord. To, in our prayer meeting, we have commitments to the Lord. Na meron tayong mga activities, Bible studies. But we are engaged in pursuit of more income. Sabi nga kanina, nakikipag-compete tayo sa Diyos. And, or I mean, uh, yung itong mama na to is competing with our time with the Lord. Finances are tricky and often affect us without our conscious knowledge. Parang hindi natin na nakikita, hindi natin na napapansin. And if you cannot realize it, it has the ability to draw us slowly and slightly from God. Pinapalayo niya tayo unti-unti sa Panginoon. And in this verse, on the next uh, uh, verses. It says in 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is the root of all kind of evil. For which some have strayed from faith. Ito po yung it will slightly and slowly will um, ilalayo tayo sa Panginoon. For which some have strayed from the faith and their greediness and fears themselves through with many sorrows. Matthew 6, 31-33, it says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the gentle seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all things, all, all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Because there's a tendency that God seek finances first before the, before the kingdom of God. And it is true. Do you believe that God's plan for us is to prosper us? So if you have your notes and your Bible, you can open your Bible in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says of what the Lord has planned. It's on not to, to plan, but He already planned. Planned it. For I know the plans I have for you. For I know the thoughts I think about you. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. But there will be instances, no? That there's no money. Lord, your plan for me is to prosper me. But there, there is an instance that you are planning to open a business. <coughs> Or expand a business, but there's no enough fund for it. And you are planning, Lord, nasa ibang bansa ako, I want to send out para may pagpatuloy o maumpisahan yung building of my house, but there's no fund. If you, have, if you don't have yet, maybe you, perhaps the Lord is saying, wait. Or perhaps... When you say, I want to build a house, maybe he's saying, don't build right now. But he didn't say no. Because God he has his own perfect timing. God has his own perfect will. And his own perfect <coughs> way. But there are times, because there are times that God uses our finances to direct to direct us, but there are times that we are bl blinded kung ano yung sinasabi niya, what he is saying. Anong ginagawa natin? We're running out to borrow money. To borrow what we need. 
or to take another job to earn money. We are helping God to provide for us. It, it is true, right? Don't help God by borrowing or using other means to raise money. When we face financial difficulties, we need to remember this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into, your, to, into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Because whether you like it or not, when you don't have enough money, nagiging mataray, you become sad, irritado, you don't know the, the emotions or the feeling that you are into. And Lord, why you are try, you're placing me into these trials? Why you are placing me into this problem? The Lord says, count it all joy. Dapat mas masaya ka pa when you don't have enough. When Actually, God is more than enough. But we have to see it. But the manifestation, like sometimes, you don't have in your hand enough money na nakikita ng ating mga mata, sabi dyan, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. When we are in various trials, actually, the Lord is not testing us to prove our faithfulness. Because actually, we always, honestly, we always fail into the testing. But that is not what the Lord is concerned on this. He tests us not to prove anything if we are faithful, but He tests us to strengthen our faith. Because without trial, without testing, well, hindi ma hindi ma strengthen ng ating pananampalataya. Like we discussed previously about faith. There can be many reasons that God does not provide finances for us at a particular point of our lives. Meron mga pagkakataon, maybe there are reasons. Or yes, there, there are reasons for sure. But maybe this, uh, these are few of those reasons. Because we don't need it. We don't need it. God may not provide because what we think we need that we cannot do without is only a want. Maybe He's not providing because we don't need it. And if we have it, maaring mapasira ang ating buhay, mapariwara. And maybe one reason is because He wants to test our faith, sabi nga doon sa verse natin kanina, not to, to prove we, if we are faithful. He is the only faithful. But to strengthen our faith because we... We, he is preparing us for a greater things to come. If we are not faithful in little things, how we, he will give us he will give us great things. So he wants to test us to be patient, to be uh, humble while in the in the time of waiting. And one reason that maybe he's not providing is because he is we are misspent or is spending not correctly what God has given us or is teaching us. We, maybe God has already given to you the, that part, that blessing, but you use it for some other thing. And we think, Lord, you didn't provide. Na ang katotohanan, the truth, He already provided. Amen. And one more reason maybe is we may have violated scriptural principle in finances. One is to tithe and give. Did you? Are you doing it? And you are asking and expecting the Lord for His blessings. There are many doors that, it, that the key is already given to you. And it's for you to open it. Sabi nga doon sa last uh, topic ni po ba? Um, actually, the kingdom of God is not a uh, warehouse. It's a manufacturing company but if you will not operate you will not get the the product and what one reason is he wants a major change in direction in your life he might says don't go here 
but you are continuously going in this way because he wants you to be here that's why he is not really providing in this but you when you are in line to his will to the direction to the route that he is leading you do na bubuhos ang masaganang pagpapala so if if we are experiencing some um, trials that we cannot understand, ask the Lord, pray to the Lord, and ask direction. Maybe one of this, or maybe other reason, kung bakit hindi niya talaga napuprovide, o hindi pa niya, or we need withhold niya, pero nandiyan yung ating blessing uh, na ibibigay niya sa, at- sa atin. So we should ask the Lord, and He is faithful to answer all our prayers. That is the first key. What is the first key? <laughs> ah, <laughs> ano pa yung first key? Na kailangan po is not to consider finances as a, just a material thing, but a spiritual issue. And what else? This is the second. is to avoid debt. You, you don't usually, uh, we don't usually talk in pulpit. Or we don't usually talk in preaching or sermon. Usually encouragement you give. And you will receive the blessing of the Lord. But you know, one, th- one key to unlock God's provisions and blessing is for us to avoid debt. Utang. It is not God's will for us to be in debt. Inulit ko po, it is not God's will for us to be in debt. Amen. Ayaw, ayaw pag-usapan, pero kailangan nating pag-usapan. Because one, debt go against scripture. Ang pangungutang ay against sa Scripture. Deuteronomy 15.6 For the Lord your God will bless you just as He promised you. You shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations but they shall not reign over you. Because if we go against the blessing, ang kabalik is is curse. Psalms 37.21 The wicked borrows and does not repay. Tayo po ba yun? We do not repay. The wicked borrows and does not repay. But the Lord says we are righteous and we are climbing, climbing. We are righteous and we are the righteousness of God. We shows mercy and gives. So kung meron tayong kapatid na nagbabaro, we should mercy, show mercy. And there will be times that you have to give it. Because debt go against scripture. Okay, next. Debt produces bondage. Proverbs 22.7 says, The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Whether you like it or not, whether you are the borrower or a lender, you are engaging to an agreement of bondage. Sabe, the borrower is a servant of a lender. A lender is the master of the borrower. There is an agreement. So, debt, so that's why the, we are encouraging avoid debt. Because debt produces bondage. What are the bondage? Financial bondage. When you are in bondage, you are, when you are in debt, you are in bondage. Even when you have got it carefully, pinag-isipan mong mabuti, you think about carefully, you pray for it, you're still in bondage as per that uh, verse in Proverbs. You surrender a part of your freedom when you are in bondage or when you are in debt. 
Someone else control a part of you. There is a certain portion of your salary that is not able for you to use in a way that you desire to use it because you owe some money to someone. And this is financial bondage. What else? Bondage in a relationship. When you owe money to someone, it becomes very difficult for you to continue relating to them with the same freedom that you owe, with, that you had once. Yung bang, yung kayo ay ano, close na close, but because, ah, ah close ako dito, manghihiram ako, but you have no, you have not uh, repay, or you have, um, alam, alam mo yung naiintindahan nyo po ba, hindi na yung dating relasyon, ang kaya nyong ipakita. Every time you see them, you are thinking about that money. Gaganyang, lumiliit ang mundo eh. <laughs> Countless relationship has been destroyed because of that. Yeah. Countless. Though that the relationship that you once treasured, once you enter yung debt, yung pangungutang, nasisira. Same way when you loan money to someone, that person becomes your slave or servant. Even if you have lent it with a free heart, it will someday, somehow, bring tension into the relationship. Hindi natin malalaman kung kailan, but somewhere, somehow. Sometimes, I would even, as ako po, no, personal experience, I would even forgive the debt for us to save the relationship. Pero sa, pero sa kahit saan pumunta, bumabalik pa rin. You still remember. And it, it became the reason why hindi mo na siya papautangin. So, may, yung marang alam mo yun, binig, binig, pinorgib na nga kita, susubukan mo pa ulit. <laughs> so, there's a bondage in relationship. That's why we, are, we don't encourage depth. Physical bondage. Many people end up in jail because of that. Both in biblical times, not only today, hindi dahil uso ngayon, it happened also in the biblical times. You know the story of uh, the parable of unforgiving servant? When the king, when the one servant cannot, um, cannot pay the king, sobrang laking pera, so, sobrang laking halaga, and the king's um, decision is, sabi dito, his master commanded that he, so, he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and that payment be made. So, kailangan na silang ipagbili para mabayaran ng utang. But because of, um, you know, he, he asked for forgiveness, he asked for mercy. And um, the king is so merciful na pinatawad siya. But then, when he saw his brethren or co or brothers binigwas na may utang sa kanya na hindi kasing laki ng utang niya sa king. Kaya ko kaya, can I afford a monthly plan or monthly payment? Then you are, and you say, ah, yeah, I can do that. Then you enter into a trap. Because what we should do is not to ask us if we can do that, but we have to sit down Study our plans, our, our salary, our incomes. Pray to the Lord, and you will. If um, because if you will just say I can, then you enter into the trap. Ask the Lord if you really need it, because the Lord is so faithful to provide to all your needs. You know, sometimes in the Philippines, also, no, they they are. They are um, buying a bigger television for an installment using a credit card. After payment for a year, the old, that uh, the television is already old. It's not new anymore. You want a bigger one. But how? Let's talk about what are the steps to get out of debt. Ito yung pinaka importante. There is your question. Is there any way out? And the answer is yes. What 
can you do? <laughs> the answer is yes, there's a way out, but they will be a they will be painful, but when we take them, God will surely release his blessing in our lives. Deal it with your heart. First step. Allow God first to speak to your heart about your depth. Read and meditate the word of God about this topic or about what you are into. So kanina, we have many uh, uh, verses. Meditate it. Look at the reason why you, are, you, have, you found yourself or you enter into the depth. It is a lack of, is it a lack of contentment? Analyze. Or it is because of disobedience, kaya ka pumasok sa pangungutang. And this, these are the issues of the heart and allow God to deal with them before doing the next step. And the next step is, so first deal with, with your heart. Let the Lord work and direct you and stop spending more than you are making. What are these are the second step? Stop spending more than you are making. Last Wednesday in our worship exhortation, may na open na isang ta, na isang line si Pastor Jax, which is very far from our topic, and he says, "Do not increase the cost of living when you receive provisions from the Lord, but increase your amount of giving. Amen. When you receive, increase." When you receive promotion, do not, do not um, increase your cost of living. I'll, I'll rent for, kung before nasa partition ka, I'll make two bedroom, I'll rent a two bedroom uh, apartment. Don't increase the cost of living, increase the amount of giving. Stop spending more than you are making, at least you can avoid getting into debt. Make commitment that when you do not have money, you won't buy it. Yeah, Lord, I need um, uh, Samsung 10 kasi ang meron ako is Samsung 9. If you don't have money to buy it, don't get it. Make it a commitment. Sabi nyo nga po, when I don't need, when I don't have money, I, don't have money, I, won't, buy I won't buy anything. anything. That is not that is not necessary. That is not necessary. Amen. Amen. It is a simple statement, but it is radically change. It will radically change the way of your living. It is better to live without things rather than purchasing on credit. On credit. If God does not provide you with money, don't do it. I'll repeat: If God don't provide you with money, don't do it. It applies to food. <laughs> Don't eat. I, ano yung muna yung pagkain sa mga fast food? Cook. Because it's cheaper. We don't have, if you don't have money to eat in that restaurants, don't do it. Amen. It applies to food, to clothing, to education. Amen. Ah, I want uh, in the... Ano ba yung malalaking school na talagang mahal? I want my, to send my family. Ang mga utang ako talaga ako. But for, ako po, no, when I study, I, I don't live, hindi ako pinabayaan ng aking magulang, but instead, I was sent in a public school. Just for me not to stop. But for the others, na kailangan, high school pa lang sa mamahaling uh, school na agad, papangutang ko talaga yan. Kahit anong mangyari. Kahit anong paraan. <laughs> so, if God doesn't provide you with money, don't do it. It is better not to eat dinner one night than to go out to the store and ask to buy some bread on a credit. Fasting mo na. Maybe the Lord is asking you to fast and pray. If you have been using credit cards and are, are, are entangled with it, get scissor. Cut it. Cut it. But do not request for another one. <laughs> Alam ko yung mga style na yan eh. Or close the account. 
Pag may loan po, mahirap i-close ang account. But don't use it. Cut it. And third, list all your debts. Lista. Maupo ka. Lista mo lahat. Sometimes, people don't know how far in debt they are. But if you are going to be able to control of your finances, you will need to be totally honest with yourself. Sulat mo. Isa isa. List all the debts you may have. Banks, friends, or even to your enemy. And don't say, ah, sa, sa mother ko naman yun, hindi ko na ililista. Still write it. Because siya muna yung nagpauna, sabi niya, ilista mo sa tubig. <laughs> list it. List all your debts, even to your family. From your family. List the amount you owe. Not only the names, the, the amount. List the interest you are paying on a loan. Even the interest. And the next step is, make plan for paying them. Which one are the most important or urgent? Which one have the highest interest? Decide how you will, and decide which one needs attention first. You know what? Um, as my testimony, when I received my salary, after removing what is for the Lord, I asked the Lord, what should I do in this amount? Which one should I pay first? Because if, if the Lord will tell you which one is the first, He will let the other wait. He will, pro if it's in the other person, He will provide all that person's need just not to ask you to pay, to pay for your loan or for your debt. Ask the Lord what is the first. And who is the first. And decide how you will begin to repay them. You need to look at what you have been making and spending and then decide how you are going to reduce your debts. Determine the monthly payment that you will make towards the debt and begin to pay them. This will require a lot of discipline from you because there will always be issues that come up that will make it very difficult to continue with your plan. May mga pagkakataon you really want to pay but something come up and ano parang parang magandang unahin to but stay uh, on focus and in discipline. Force yourself to do it because you can do it. Amen. When debt is cleared, don't spend the additional money you now have, but use this money. Example, you, you decided for, to pay two first, two persons or two, de, or two loans, and you are finished with one. Don't use that money. Use it or add it to the other one so that it will be finished first or finished also. And then, another step, how to get out of debt, talk to your creditors. Huwag niyong ibahin ang landas. Huwag niyong palitin ang niyong mundo. Talk to your creditors. You need to go to the people to whom you owe money and explain to them how you will repay. Most will accept your plan if they see that it's reasonable for you and that you are committed to fulfilling your promise. Don't promise more than you can realistically pay. It's better to promise little and be able to do it than to promise more than you can do. Take your commitment as a serious obligation before God. You can be able to finish your loan if you take it seriously and to make this commitment not to people but to God. Lord, I am willing to pay. And the Lord will honor it. Next. Don't go for sangla. Another loan. Sell items to be free from debt. If you need to sell one item just to pay the, that loan, do it. Ay, isa sangla ko muna to. Babayaran. Parang pumasok ka na rin sa isa pang pangungutang. Sell items if you need to, to bring, to be free from debt. 
Nakikita ka ng ibang gaganda ng mga alahas mo, pero hindi mo mabayaran ang iyong utang. Next is, save instead of borrowing. If the Lord says, wait, wait, and then get that time to save for that thing that you really wanted na, na paglaanan ng ganong fund. As soon as you come out of debt, start saving the same money you used to repay loans. If you able to repay loan, you are able to save. Do you get it? If you are able to repay loan, you are able to save. Amen. Saving will protect you, <coughs> protect us from em emergencies according to the, to the use of God's wisdom na ibinigay nila niya sa atin. And for some who just in have, doesn't have loan, and you just have enough, and you say, I just have enough and I don't... Uh, wala kong pagkakataon to save, try to stretch and kung ano lang yung kaya and make it a habit. And then allow it to grow. Sabi po sa Proverbs 13.11b, but whoever gathers money little by little will make it grow. So if you can just give, um, um, set aside hundreds, 100 in one month, but make it a habit. And you will see later, magiging malaki na, palaki na palaki, how much you can um, uh, save. Now, this may come to your mind, this question. Does it wrong to borrow? Ay, may nauna na, no? In asking this question, we must be very careful in this. Make sure we are following God's plan for our lives as it is still produce a level of bondage that is an unescapable debt. So, we don't encourage borrowing. But, if you are considering to borrow, be careful. Pray. Make sure that it is God's, uh, you are following God's plan for our lives that it is still produce level of bondage. Just because the borrowing looks legitimate, makes good financial sense, it still doesn't mean God wants us to do it. Remember, we are steward of His money and He should approve of what we are doing. We should not blindly follow what others are doing without seeking God's guidance and making sure that we have heard, heard from Him on this issue. I need it need much prayer and obtain, uh, obtaining wise counsel. If you want to enter into bar, into a loan, ga, ask for a wise counsel. Pray. Get godly counsel. Don't borrow more than you can afford to lose. So, because you have to think, what if it fails. For example, you are opening a business and what if it fails? Do you have something to pay, repay instead? But if you will, you pray and you give it to the Lord, I believe and I, I know it will not fail. Amen. Don't borrow more than you can realistically pay. Sit down. Kung ano po yung income, kaya ko ba? Sit down. Find the best interest rates. Sell items to be free from... Naulit lang po, hindi po yung kasali dyan. Ayan, kasami pa rin. Save instead of borrowing. So, I mean, we are not encouraging, encouraging to, for you to enter a loan. But, sabi nga, we have our own decision. And these are just a step... Uh, or uh, a guidelines. Pray, get godly counsel. We can ask uh, someone who is not uh, yung pong hindi nangungutang for a godly counsel and we can ask our, our pastors for a godly counsel. They, they might not be a businessman but they are our, an effective businessman of God's kingdom, of, God, or of, of our Father. And what about consigning or signing as Ano nga, ba't may ganun po doon? 
Signing a pledge for another person, is it biblical? Guarantee. Guarantor. Sabi po dyan, my child, if you have put up security for a friend's debt, or agreed to guarantee the debt of a stranger, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself. For you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy, now swallow your pride and go and beg to have your name erased. The, the Bible is not, um, hindi nila, in, not encouraging us to enter into a consignment, guaranteeing adept. Don't put it off, do it now, don't rest until you do. Save yourself like a gazelle. See, you know, gazelle is like a, sh a, a deer. Na kapag nag escape siya sa hunter niya, hindi siya mabagal. Napakabilis. Like a, a bird fleeing from the net. So, ganun daw kabilis. Hindi natin ipagpapabukas. Lord. Because of love. You know, as my testimony, because of love, I enter. But the Bible says it's not encouraging for us to, to be a guarantor because consigning is just serious as getting into the debt. Don't do it. Kapag hindi nagbayad ang inang utang, ikaw ang magbabayad. It is equal na parang ikaw ang nangutang. Even you love the person, I love <laughs> the person. I I. I May testimony, I honor or, or I uh, respect, but the Lord biblically says, or the Lord says, do not enter into consignment to a as a guarantor. Don't do it. Conclusion. Take a few moments to examine yourself. Have you recognized the power of money in your life? Because one key is to um, do not look money or finances as spiritual as a material thing, but a spiritual matter because it affects us in different way, our emotions. And second key is to avoid debt. Ask God for forgiveness. Take step to get out of debt where you have violated his principles and then take necessary steps to take out of debt. Then you will begin to see God's blessing on your finances and experience more freedom. Take step to start saving. In all of this, ask God's wisdom and direction and understanding. Do not damage God's reputation. We are God's representative here on earth. We are His ambassadors and have already seen that we are stewards of all that we possess. The Lord's plan for us is to prosper us. So once again, do not av or avoid entering into debt. So let's all stand. <laughs>